I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Tuesday, June the 17th, 2014. The parents and relatives of the three yeshiva students kidnapped last Thursday night in the West Bank met together for the first time last night in order to strengthen each other and those who are searching for their sons. Racheli Sprecher Frankel, the mother of 16-year-old Naftali, told reporters outside the house afterwards that the meeting was very significant. She said, we want to strengthen security forces who are working day and night, the decision makers and the prime minister who is in contact with us. She said, we pray that all the soldiers and our children will come home without injury, saying we send our thanks to all, everyone participating in this extraordinary effort. Frankel said the families felt the embrace of the entire Jewish nation and that all they wanted now, she said, was to be able to embrace their children. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called the families during their meeting to reassure them that Israel was doing everything in order to find their boys. The Prime Minister also addressed a press conference yesterday outside IDF headquarters in Tel Aviv, where he said that Israeli security forces were in the middle of a complicated operation that may take some time. Netanyahu said, at the moment, we are focusing on one goal, the retrieval of our youths, our youths who were taken. We are also operating against Hamas, who the prime minister said would pay a heavy price for the abductions. Netanyahu also said that he personally thanked U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry for his statements condemning the kidnapping and urged the entire international community to do the same. In addition to the U.S., condemnations have also been expressed by Canada, Great Britain, Spain, United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, and the International Committee of the Red Cross. And just today, the European Union condemned the kidnapping of the teens as well and called for their immediate and safe return. And more arrests were made overnight in the West Bank by Israeli security forces in their search for the teens. About 40 Palestinian suspects, most of whom are members of Hamas, were arrested by the IDF, who also confiscated weapons found during the search and arrests, including a variety of firearms and explosives. Israel's Air Force hit two targets in Gaza in the early morning hours after a rocket was launched towards Israel last night. The rocket did not successfully reach Israel. There have been several incidents of rocket fire from Gaza into Israel over the last few days. Israel's Culture Ministry Director General Orly Frohman and German Culture Minister Monika Gruters signed an agreement to partner on research in museums regarding Jewish-owned Nazi looted art. Art experts from both countries will undergo training and coordinate a joint database from museums in Israel and in Germany to determine the original ownership of art stolen by the Nazis during the Holocaust and return the art to their rightful owners or heirs. Jewish philanthropist Moise Safra has passed away at the age of 79. Safra, who was born in Syria, later moved with his family to Brazil, where they founded Banco Safra, which grew to become the Safra Group. Safra was a major donor to international Jewish charities, including the Albert Einstein Israelite Hospital. He had reportedly suffered from Parkinson's disease for many years and died on Friday in Brazil, several days after suffering a heart attack. Moe Safra is survived by his wife, Chela, who serves as the treasurer of the World Jewish Congress, and their five children. Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz was given an honorary doctorate by the Technion Israel Institute of Technology in Haifa yesterday. The Jerusalem Post reports Dershowitz was honored for his quote distinguished legal career and his quote life's work as a passionate persistent and persuasive champion of the state of Israel in numerous and diverse arenas. Dershowitz said he was honored to receive a doctorate from the Technion which he deemed, quote, the epitome of emerging science and humanity. And turning now to our Shalom TV programming for tonight, Tuesday, June the 17th, Shalom TV President Mark S. Golub is taking your phone calls. The Shalom TV Talk Back Live begins at 7 tonight, where you can call in to talk about Shalom TV or any issue of Jewish importance or anything you wish. 
The number to call is 201-242-1142. You can also submit a question or comment through Twitter or email. On Twitter, it's at Rabbi Mark S. Golub. Email rabbigolub at shalomtv.com. And later tonight on L'Chaim at 9, Mark is joined by one of America's foremost feminists and authors, Phyllis Chesler, who talks about her harrowing experience as a young bride held hostage in Afghanistan, which she writes about in her new book, A Bride in Kabul. That's all coming up tonight here on Shalom TV and shalomtv.com. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Tuesday, June the 17th, 2014. I'm Tisha Bader.